back again I decided to do one more part to this video part three just so you could see the platform down near the concrete and how that all fastens together here's the little ramp for getting goods up on the platform I would you know five foot by five foot platform I wouldn't go smaller than that four foot by four foot would be a little tight this has given us a lot of room to put dressers and furniture and things up into the loft it just seems to be a real nice size and of course you're going to be limiting your pole barn depending on how it's constructed with your you know your the distance between your center lines on your trusses and this older building here built in the 70s our center lines on the trusses were eight feet so i was able to essentially put my frame up in between these trusses and still end up with after the casters and everything a five foot wide platform here's a better look at the pulley system when you're picking up your parts you want to make sure you over engineer everything by quite a, a, a large margin um, for instance this swivel here I think is rated at about 6,000 pounds working limit. Well, we're never going to have even close to that kind of force on this, but I would buy the most heavy-duty stuff you can afford. Uh, the cables are all rated. The smaller cables here at the ends are rated at 3,000 pounds working load, and then this large cable here is, I think, a 5,000 pound working load cable. And the main thing is, is whatever size you use, obviously over engineer it but also don't ride on it and keep people away from it when you, you know we're lifting freight don't ever have anybody under it obviously just common sense and you want to keep these cables encased like I say I've got plywood that I put over this chase here so that in the event something ever did snap uh, the cables are not going to whip around and hit someone standing up at the top of the work platform but you know common sense goes a long ways obviously you're not going to want to have kids playing on this. Um, if you do have kids around, what I do is I have a separate power switch. I'll show you that here where I can turn the power to the winch, the hoist rather, off. And that's way up high located where someone can't reach it like a child. That way they, if they do come out here and start to play with the buttons, they're not going to go anywhere. You just have to remember to turn it on and off when you're done using it. Uh, platforms, 2x6s, and I've used some 12 inch, actually that's 10 inch LVL lumber for the main carriers with some 2x6s, joist hung off that every 16 inches on center and a 3 quarter inch plywood floor. Fastened my casters bolted those through and then I've got the through bolted um, eye hook here I can't think of the name of it right now but that's where my cable fastens to down there now when you're using these coated cables make sure you strip the coating off where you bind them together you never want to bind that coating together because believe it or not, that cable will pull right out of there. So that's a very important thing. If you do use coated wire rope, to you can see here where I cut the sheathing off it, pulled the sheathing out, then wrapped it before I put my fastening points on here and spliced it together. And over here on the heavy load areas, I use three. Again, like I say, the weak link in this is really the hoist. You're going to want to, if you want to use this as a serious freight elevator, you're going to want to invest in a probably a two ton uh, electric hoist or electric chain fall. That would be absolutely ideal for this particular setup. All right, email me if you have any questions or you want to see more pictures. Thanks.